All right, we are here to talk about the equations of lines in three dimensions. The notes are on Canvas. Feel free to download them and go along as we do. Uh, first slide, this was a quiz. You can try it on your own, but it really had nothing to... We did the quiz something else in class, so don't worry. It's a practice problem if you want. Let's get to the meat of things. So... A line is a one-dimensional object, and I like to think about dimensions when I'm dealing with geometry. We are usually living in three dimensions these days, but since a line is still one-dimensional, what a dimension really means is how many pieces of information do you need in order to specify a point on the line? Or on whatever the object is. A two-dimensional object, you would need two pieces of information. But a line should only be one, representing how far along you are. There should be a comma here in X, Y, Z. So, I like to think of the parameter T. We create a new parameter that represents time. And so, for each of our three variables, X, Y, and Z, we have X naught, which is the X value at zero. And y naught and z naught. And then each one is plus a t, b t, or c t. So this is the parameter, these are the parametric equations for some line L. What this represents is that x naught, y naught, z naught are the starting point. So, for example, then, x naught, y naught, z naught are the starting point. ABC is a vector that's launching from X naught, Y naught, Z naught. And so for a positive T, we go farther along the line, whereas a negative T would take us backwards. Now, it is imperative to specify the domain. How far along this line do you go? Because if you stop at any point, it's not a line. It's just a part of a line, line segment, perhaps. So... We would, in this case, for a line, we need to specify t goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. If you leave that off, well, if you leave it off, that's generally what I assume, but you really should make sure to include it just so you're absolutely clear. Okay. Now, another way of writing this, the vector form, which is kind of modeled by the good old y equals mx plus b. Instead of y, we have t is our input instead of x, we have r, bold-faced r, as our output. Because remember, what we are saying now, whereas before we had x, y, and z as three separate equations, though we're, those are all scalars, but here we're combining them into a vector. So bold-faced r would be the x, the y, and the z combined. Boldface V is the combined speeds ABC. And boldface R0 is the combined X0, Y0, Z0. The way the point slope form works is to say B is your starting point and M is your speed. Well, here R0 is your starting point and V is your speed. So let's do an example. Right? Find the vector and parametric equations of the line parallel to i plus 4j minus 2k that goes through the point 5, 1, 3. And for good measure, let's find two other points on the line. So it's not anything too fancy here. Uh, clear the board. So we have the velocity vector is... 1, 4, and negative 2, or i plus 4j minus 2k. And the starting point is 5, 1, 3. Now, we can't add points to vectors, so we'll change this into the vector 5, 1, 3, and we can call that r naught. So then... We just put the pieces together. R of t is v times t plus 5, 
one, three. Hmm. And to get other points, you just plug in. R of one would be one, four, minus two times one plus five, one, three is six, five, one. Now that's technically written as a vector, so we should rewrite with parentheses six, five, and one. And if you same thing, plug in negative one, you'll eventually get to the point four, negative three, and five. Now we ask for both vector and uh, parametric form. And parametric is when you split into the three different pieces. So I'm going to erase most of this. And say, well, what is the three different parts? And so we go component-wise here. We say, what do we get for x? Well, we get the t distributes. So we will get t plus 5. Those are my x components. The y is 4t plus 1. And the z is negative 2t plus 3. I said we got to specify the domain, so let's say negative infinity is less than t is less than infinity. Well, if you want to write as t is in r, that means the same thing. I would accept either one of those. <sighs> Okay, so let's keep going. What is next? Next up is the symmetric equations. Now this is a slightly different way of doing it, which is you sort of are comparing how fast each one is changing. What basically this is, is x, y, and z are variables. And this is a general rule in math that if it's just there's an x and an x naught, you generally assume x naught is some fixed point, whereas regular x is a variable. And so this came from solving for t in each case. So let me show you how that works. So the idea is we have an equation x equals x naught plus a t. We could solve this for t. x minus x naught equals a t. And t is y minus y naught. Or x, sorry, x minus x naught over a. But then we do the same thing for y. This is, this is x. y minus y naught over b is t. So we can set those equal to each other since they're both equal to t. And we do the same for z. z minus z naught over c is equal to t. And so that gives us the symmetric equations here. Let's do an example. And parametric and symmetric equations for the line through those two points a and b and figure out where does it intersect the xy plane. How would we do that? Well, what we do, we have, let's see, we have our two points here. I forgot what they were. Two, four, negative three, three, negative one, one. Two, four, negative three, and three, uh, negative one, and one. So this is A and this is B. And we were asked for both parametric and symmetric. 
So parametric is the one we write out each variable, so we don't need the vector equation. But let's look at the x. We have x, x starts at 2. And we can say, what is the change in x? You know, x1 is 3. And we tend to just assume the change in time is 1 between these, but the point is, we can say, um, x is 2 plus 1t. Maybe I should work out the velocity vector just to be sure. The velocity vector would be the same as the vector a, b. So that becomes, we do the b, 3 minus 2 is 1. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. And 1 minus negative 3 is 4. So that's where the a comes from, this here. y, so where did y start? It started at 4. And what is its speed? Negative 5. So 4 minus 5t. And then z, well, it starts at negative 3 plus 4t. So those are your parametric equations. You can write this as r of t is this whole set here. Now what about the symmetric equations? Well, in that case we solve each one of these three for t and set them equal to each other. So this first one we can write it as x minus 2 equals t. And this second one, we can say, well, y minus 4 is negative 5t. So t is y minus 4 over negative 5. The third one, well, we get z plus 3 is 4t. So z plus 3 over 4 is t. And so now we just say set all the t's equal to each other. So x minus 2, I'm going to put over 1 just because that way they all look the same shape. y minus 4 over negative 5. And z plus 3 over 4. So this one just compares them to each other without need for a t. It, we get rid of the parameter. As sometimes you want to introduce a parameter t, but sometimes you want to get rid of it. And instead of having to say, how are they affected by t, you say, how do they affect each other with this more direct comparison. All right, let's look at the next example. Oh, no, shoot, there was still one thing left which was, it said, where does it intersect the xy plane? Well, the xy plane is a set of all points where z is 0. So what we're going to do is, for one of these, we're going to say z equals 0. So let's take this equation here, or this one over here, whichever. If z equals 0, then, let's see, 0 equals negative 3 plus 4t. So 3 is 4t, or t is 3 over 4. So then we'll plug that 3 fourths into the x and y. x is 2 plus 3 fourths, which is 11 over 4. And y is 4 minus 5 times 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth. Yes, yeah, 16 fourths minus 15 fourths. So the point is 11 over 4, 1 over 4, and 0. So what we essentially said was we, we did a little back and forth we said z is zero what time would z be zero solve for t and then say at that time what are x and y okay so now let's do the other example 
The next one it has, the points are negative one, three, one. And four, three, negative two. So the velocity vector between them would be 5, 0, and negative 3. Now, it would Sorry about that. Let me... Okay, it looks like it's still recording. Now, we weren't asked for the vector equation, but we could do it if we wanted to. We could say r of t is v t plus either one of these as a starting point. All right. So. If we wanted to do this as the symmetric equation, or the parametric, we'll do that first. We would get 5t minus 1 for x, because 5t minus 1. 0t plus 3 for y, and negative 3t plus 1 for z. So those are the parametric. What about the symmetric? Well, we solve each of these for t, so we get 5t equals x plus 1. So t is x plus 1 over 5. And then for y, we get 0t is y minus 3. So t would be y minus 3 over 0. Uh, oh, shoot. We can't do over 0, can we? Uh, huh. What do we do there? Well... If you think about it, y is never changing here. There's no change in y. It's 0t. So y is always going to be 3. So we can just write y equals 3. And then for z, we would get z minus 1 over negative 3 is t. So the symmetric equations, we would say we've got t is x plus 1 over 5, and t is... Uh, I have a negative here? No, that's no negative. That's just the way I drew it. T is z minus 1 over negative 3. So we can set them equal to each other. z minus 1 over negative 3 equals x plus 1 over 5 and y equals 3. So you would just include these facts that are encircled here. Basically, we're saying that if one of the x, y, or z doesn't change, we just have to state it separate from the other two. Now, what this really means is that if you did the plane y equals 3, which is a vertical plane, the line would be in that plane. Or, yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. All right, we're almost done, I think. We just got a few more examples to cover. So let's take a look. Right, a line segment. So how is a line segment different from a line? Well, a line segment has beginning and end. So if we see what was the example we had earlier, the first example we had was um, uh, let's see. We had r of t is x was 2 plus t, y was 4 minus 5t, and z was negative 3 plus 4t. Now, what if instead of, as we normally did, saying t goes from negative infinity to infinity, we would say t is between just 0 and 1. Well, that means at the start, we plug in 0, we would get 2, 4, negative 3. 
And if we plug in t equals 1, we would get 2 plus 1, 4 minus 5, negative 3 plus 4 is 3 minus 1, 1. So this would be a line segment that only goes from start to end. And so there are two ways to do this. You can make your linear equations the same way that we did and then just plug in 0 and 1 to get the endpoints. Or there is a shortcut. Let's say we want it to go between two points. Um, all right, from R0 to R1. And we want the time to go from 0 to 1. This is common. We make the time go from 0 to 1. And you could really make it be anything, but it's sort of the normal way to do it. Well, we would say we'd have velocity vector would be r1 minus r0 divided by 1. And so the equation would be r1... Oh, sorry, how do we do this? R of t equals the starting point r0 plus r1 minus r0 times t. If we rearrange this a little to collect some like terms, we can make this as r0 plus r1t minus r0t and then factor out the r0, we will get r0 1 minus t plus r1 t. And so this is the shortcut formula right here for a line segment where t just goes from 0 to 1. So you are not required to memorize this formula, but it may save you some time if you need to make a line segment just connecting two points. So RT is R naught time or R of zero times one minus T plus R of one times T, where T goes from zero to one. I always mix up which one has the one minus T and which one has the T. So a quick check would be just plug in zero and one to this and see if it the starting point is at zero and the ending point is at one. As if you do it the other way, it'll be the same line segment but in the opposite direction. So quick example. Find the equation of the line segment from 2, negative 1, 4, to one, negative 1, 3, negative 1. All right. So, let's see. From 2, negative 1, 4, to negative 1, 3, negative 1. So... We could work out the velocity vector, but we don't have to. We can say r of t equals, let's see, it's 2, negative 1, 4, something, plus negative 1, 3, negative 1. And then we say, which one is it? I think it's this one is the 1 minus t, and this is the t. We say, check. If you plug in 0, then this right term will go away. This will become a 1, so it'll be the starting point. Yeah, and if we plug in 1, this first term goes away, and we're left with just the second point. Okay. Uh, but you definitely need to say t is between 0 and 1. I said earlier, if it's a full line and you leave it off, that's not so bad. But if it's a line segment and you leave it off, people will think you mean the full line. So I would definitely take off points if on a quiz I said, hey, give me this line segment, and you forgot to say t is between 0 and 1. Yeah, it's just a rule in math that if you don't say the domain, you assume it's the biggest domain possible. So that would be a line in that case. All right.